hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. If you wanted to test the effect that the actual environment has on genes, what you could do is, I mean, you could grab, let's say, a pair of twins. These are happy twins. And what you could do is you could take one of them and let's say this one and put this one in a dark cave and leave her there for a couple of months, maybe a couple of years. So leave her in a dark cave and then take the other twin and put her into a happy family where everything is perfect. So the happy family. And what you could do then is you could just after a couple of months, you could see the difference. You no, know, like how how do they look alike? You know, is there a difference in their appearance, in their behavior? Are there differences that have come about because of the different types of environments they lived in? Now, that might be sound like a great experiment, but the only problem is it's not really ethically correct. We can't just take human beings and you know put a little girl into a cave, in a dark cave, and just say, okay, let's see what happens. So we have to have somewhere we can test it, but we don't have these crazy kinds of tests when it comes to human beings. Even with animals, we shouldn't be doing this. But we can do something to test the effect of the environment on our appearance or our intelligence or whatever else. And what we could do is we could do with plants instead, just to see the, the effect of genes, environment, and phenotype. So the actual, I'll read the actual dot point. It says, students will identify data sources and perform a first investigation to demonstrate the effect of the environment on phenotype. So we need to demonstrate the effect of the environment on phenotypes. Which is what I just did just now, an example, but obviously we're not going to use this example. We're going to use a different experiment. But we should have to do an experiment to test this. And the experiment we'll do, it's quite simple actually. Um, so what we do is we have plants. We have we plant lots of seeds from the same self-pollinated tree or plant. Now, it's important that it's self-pollinated. And why would that be important? Well, if you think about it, if it's self-pollinated, that means it's actually going to have the same DNA. All of these different, so same genes and same DNA for all of these different plants. And that's what we want to do. When you test you know, the effect of the phenotype and the environment on the phenotype, we want to make sure we have identical plants. It's like our identical twins, just with plants. If we have different types of individuals, different types of plants, we couldn't be able to, maybe, you know, if it's growing a lot, Compared to the other one, that might be because that's better genes or whatever. But if we have the same plant, that means we can definitely test the effect of the environment on the phenotype as opposed to anything else. So we want to make sure we have the same genes and the same DNA. We do that by self-pollinating a plant to produce identical seeds. So we grab these tree, uh, these seeds and plant them, and we make sure we plant lots of them. So not just one tree, but lots of trees. And why is that? To increase our reliability. So the more tests we do, the more reliable the actual results are. Now what we can do is we can divide those lots of trees into two different groups. We can say we have the dark group and we have the light group. The dark group will be in an area where there's no sunlight, and the light group will be in an area where there's enough sunlight. And what we do is this is what we actually measure. So we measure the growth of the plant over a period of time. It's important, we always want to have something that we measure, and this is what we measure. So if the one grows more than the other one, because the growth itself is a phenotype. Phenotype is the appearance. Obviously, how much is growing is the phenotype itself. So that's our goal. We want to see if the phenotype is affected by different types of environment. So we measure the growth. But we also want to make sure we keep some stuff the same. So we keep the time the same, the time that both of these are exposed, or the plant, the growing time that they're given. We keep it the same. We keep the amount of water the same. We keep the amount and type of soil the same. Etc. Etc. So we just keep a lot of things the same. The only thing we're really changing is that one will get no light and the other one will get enough light. That's the only factor we're changing. The rest we're keeping the same. So for the experiment again, you would have had these two groups. And first, this would have been initially, initially, just again you had your dark group, which was had a seed everything in it as the other one, identical kind of cases, except for it was in the dark. Whereas the other one might be just outside where it should be, so it was a light group at enough light. And this was initially, and then we would have tested, you know, maybe let's say it's a fast-growing plant, so you tested it again after, say, a week. And after this week, if everything went normal, you should have the actual seed germinate and produce a small plant. And you would have looked again, looked at all the different plants, 
and your results might be that dark group there was no growing at all at the dark group so that wasn't there was not no growth whereas for the light group there was enough growth to be considered to have grown properly so here we have a plant that had grown and then what conclusion can you draw what's the conclusion well we have our actual aim was to demonstrate the effect of the, the effect of the environment on the phenotype in this case the phenotype was how much it grew and it, the environments was the dark environment or light environment and we found out that if we put it in a dark environment it grew a lot less it didn't grow at all compared to the light environment so we can see that genes might be identical for all these seeds they might say you know they want to grow to this height this is the normal growing height after a week for the actual plants so this is normal this is the genes what the genes allow it to do but if you don't have the perfect environment for it it's just not going to grow so environment does have an impact on the genes and that's why we did this experiment again we didn't do the experiment with you know the little kids and then put them into a dark cave because that's not really appropriate but we can do experiment to test the effect of the environment on the phenotype by doing experiment with plants instead i hope that was useful thank you for watching